Listen to this. Today, women are working in jobs where she works for as much as their husbands or even more. Now men take more interest in the daily care of their children. Comma, they change pamper and also feed the baby. Household chores are shared equally in the home. An example of advanced illiteracy by university applicants. Functional illit illiteracy is, as I say, the inability to function through and by means of the written language. Since independence, our leaders have boasted of one major achievement, education for all, literacy approaching the 100% mark. Yet, all around us, people are functionally illiterate, which is to say, they cannot read a sign, fill out a form, write a letter, or use a measuring tape. Take a tape measure and measure this table. And you will get answers sometimes like, this table is two feet, six inches, and four ounces. Only recently, Father Jared Panton of Serval claimed that up to 40% of our population may be functionally illiterate. The Venetian will read, I say people, big, all the people are missing, what's that children going to school and learn all that, get all the passes and no work and things for now. None of them. So I say, better yet, I know, no, nothing to do with reading, so me and I not to study them. They say I have to go for an interview. I say, well, better I ain't go again because I know well, I carry two girls and I. And I could get blank uh, or oh, I can't read and write. Swing was something without reading in it, but you have to learn maths. But I was good in maths, right? And learning about that now, I came to Sobol and I did it, um, trying to do the train now. Where then did we go wrong? When people have an impoverished life, they have an impoverished language because language doesn't exist in a vacuum. Related reasons are overpopulation. Children having children. Mothers who are 14 years old themselves and who can't read and write. How do you expect their children to read and write, no matter how well they are taught in school, because half the time they won't go to school, and when they come home from school, nobody will read them a book. Nobody will tell them to turn off the television, which, although they are dirt poor, they have. Mother, well, she doesn't leave home, so she never has no time. There are many grown people walk, walking around who can't read and write. But they will hide it because they're ashamed. My father well, could not read too good, so if I read something and he feels it doesn't make no sense, he will beat me. There are other reasons for illiteracy. An attitude against standard English. The influence of TV and dub music. Other societies understand that the standard has a value, it has a value in education, has a value in administration, that makes it indispensable. So that to mix up the ideas of being able to control the standard and the idea of being free from colonialism and why we should talk the white man language and all the rest of it is merely one facet of this, this uh, uh, ridiculous, poor me one kind of thinking that has been inculcated not only with regard to language but with regard to the economy, with regard to everything in this society and which is holding us back. Television cartoons and um, rap music, auditory too. We get our messages from those three. We feel more comfortable with rap music or slows and we feel more comfortable with that because we feel more relaxed. There are types of music like dub, like, like uh, reggae and so on, very strong rhythms and so on, which operate upon the lower brain centers. I didn't invent that, that is a known neurophysiological fact. Solomon claims there's a political reason for this. It's almost a conscious decision to keep the people stupid. Because notice, one of the things that you said just now was that um, Trinidadians say, we are not stupid, we can talk and so on, we can think, why should we talk the, the, the uh, Queen's English? But if you can't talk, you are stupid. You're not stupid, you just haven't been properly taught. The youths, the youths, the youths will listen up to what I'm saying and they say, love, I'm about telling you was right. It's not wrong because I know what's going on. Day by day, the youths are dying. So I'm going to tell you what you got to do. You got to pray to Almighty to guide you to be good and make you strong so that you can never go wrong. But we are out of time. In next week's special report, these children who did not learn to read in school speak out against the teachers who taught them or didn't. 
and a reply by the head of the Teachers Association. Ira Mathur, TV6 News, with a special report.